Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. In this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about errors and how to handle them in Zig. The first thing we're going to look at is what's called an error set. Uh, and this is encouraged uh, that you make as many error sets uh, as, as necessary, as relevant to your program. Uh, in the standard library of Zig, we have examples of uh, specific error sets for specific functions okay so like testing in zig which is really easy and 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 it's made that way so you can test wherever necessary uh, errors uh, can also be defined in error sets uh, really easily and there's no problem uh, when you uh, define specific really specific error sets for for your functions or different parts of your program here we're defining a simple little error set called input error and uh, in terms of definition error sets uh, look pretty much like enums um, you have the, the error keyword and the curly braces and within that you define the different uh, types of errors that, that this error set um, includes here we only have one which is called empty input okay here we're defining another error set called number error and in this case we have an invalid uh, character and uh, an overflow error uh, type okay and uh, zig has uh, a, a mechanism where you can create another error set by merging uh, error sets and that's done with this double pipe operator here and this basically uh, creates uh, what's known as a union of the two error sets, uh, which can be a little confusing because the term error union is used in a different way, as we're going to see briefly. But uh, all you have to know is that by using the double pipe, you can have uh, you can merge uh, error sets and create a new one, which is what we're doing here. Uh, the the error set parse error. It's going to be equal to the merging of input error and number error. Okay. Here we have a little function called parse number that receives a slice of const u8. Okay. Basically a slice of bytes. And uh, this function can return uh, what's called an error union. Okay. An error union in Zig. Uh, you can identify it because it uses this. Uh, exclamation point as a, as a binary operator it's uh, uh, the union of parse error or u8 so um, this function can either return a parse error or u8 okay and that's specified by this uh, exclamation point uh, or the bang as it's sometimes called so you have uh, this error union which is the return type of this function okay and much like in the case of uh, optionals, uh, error unions have their special syntax so you can obtain the payload or test if it's an error. Okay, we're going to be seeing that briefly. So basically in this function, uh, what we're doing is first determining if that uh, slice uh, length is zero. If it is, we're going to return an error and this is uh, a way of uh, specifying an error uh, um, by using the error keyword once more with the dot and the error uh, type name here it's in this case it's empty input and this is uh, automatically going to be uh, coerced into the empty input which is within parse error which is actually within input error okay which is defined at the beginning of the file okay so um, uh, this is like a shortcut where you can uh, just specify a specific error and zig will handle uh, finding in the error sets uh, as defined by the return type of the function uh, the, the proper uh, error that you're specifying okay and uh, if that's okay, then we proceed to return whatever uh, the stud font parse int function from the standard library uh, returns. This function takes the type of the, the target uh, number that we want 
and it takes the input in this case a slice of white and this is the radix okay and here 10 is telling us uh, that we want a decimal this this uh, slice of bytes it's formatted as a decimal number and it should be interpreted like a decimal number okay so um, here in main as you can see now in, our, in the return type of main we are also specifying the error union in this case it's parse error and void okay because we're not going to return a value from main but we could return a parse error okay now we're going to be seeing uh, several examples of how to handle errors and for that we're defining this constant here input okay which just has uh, the numbers 212 and here on uh, our first uh, sample here we're going to call that parse number uh, function with input and we are uh, assigning the result of that to this result variable okay here what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out the type using this built-in called type of and uh, on this line we're gonna try to print out the actual result and we're using this uh, bang here format specifier uh, which can be used on error unions okay so if we go here to this other terminal and we execute we will see here this would be the first lines here the type of result it's telling us it's telling us it's an error and as you can see it's expanding that uh, error set to the full error set that has the empty input the invalid character and the overflow which is basically the union that we did with uh, both error sets and uh, the bang and the U8. So in, in, in effect, the result has a type of this error union, these errors with the U8, okay? And uh, specifically, the result that we obtain is the 212 U8 value because the 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 function was successful okay there was no error so let's go back here to the code and here we're going to see an example of uh, one of the primary error handling mechanisms in zig which is the catch keyword when we have a function or a value that's an error union we can use the catch keyword uh, which is basically an operator a binary operator um, and there are several options that we have the first one that we're going to see here is that if there is an error we're going to catch the error we, we're not uh, capturing the error itself here we're not doing anything to capture the, the value of the error but what we want to do is immediately provide a value in case of error which is basically a mechanism to provide a default value if there's an error okay now this value has to be of the same type of the value type in the error union okay so we had a u8 and and here we have a number literal so what we're basically saying here is that if parse uh, number fails we're going to have the value 42 assigned to the variable result but if parse number is successful then the, the the actual value returned from parse number is going to be unwrapped and it's going to be assigned to a result okay so uh that's what um basically in this case uh, the error handling scenario is that we want to provide a default value if there's an error and we we basically ignore whatever error type uh, we had okay here we're going to see an example of uh how you can capture the error uh, with catch and once you capture it you can use a switch to switch on that error and do different things depending on the error types okay so uh, in this case we are switching on the error if there is an error we capture it and here the uh, the prongs of this switch will be in effect the different error types we have error here empty input and we're using a block here to basically uh, print out this message and then uh, we break from the block returning this value 42 so we, we print out a message and we return uh, a default value here in the case of the error of empty input 
And we have an else prong here, which basically will handle any other type of error. And what we do is we capture it once again, and we return that same error, okay? So what we're doing here with this switch is basically only handling the case of empty input. And any other type of error, we just return it from, from main as an error, okay? There are many times uh, when you're dealing with situations that you have a function that could return an error, but you know it's impossible to return an error. Like in this case, we're passing uh, a literal one, two, three to parse number. So we basically know that it will succeed in parsing this because it is a number in the, in, in the string. So uh, what you can do here is you can do a catch unreachable. Unreachable is a keyword in Zig uh, that basically expresses the situation where uh, it's unexpected to reach this part of the code, okay? So, uh, in debug mode and in release safe, which we'll be looking at later on, the, the different types of release uh, builds that you can do in Zig, but when you're developing, unreachable will produce an error. Um, which will then help you to detect if your assumption that this uh, code would be uh, this part of the code would never be reached was wrong okay so this is how you can handle that situation here you can do a catch unreachable one other uh, option that you have uh, when you have an error with catch is that you catch the error you capture it here as you see between the pipes and then you immediately uh, return that error, okay? So you would return from this function, which in this case is main, with that error that you caught, okay? And there's a shortcut for that, and it's the try keyword, okay? So you can put try before a function call or an, an error union value. And if it's an error, it'll effectively do the same as this. It'll, ca it'll capture that error and it'll return it from this function. And this is the idiomatic way of doing uh, that type of error handling, of propagating the error up to the caller, okay? This is what you're gonna see in zig code. And now that we've seen uh, errors and, 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 and error unions, we can go back to the if statement or, or, or if expression and see that, uh, as we saw previously in, in, in the episode where we talked about optionals, the if uh, uh, conditional can handle a boolean, an optional, and now we can see it can also handle an error union, okay? So if we use as a condition an error union, uh, the capture here is gonna be the value on success if there is no error, and then uh, we can have this else with a capture, and in this case, the else would be capturing the error, okay? So on error, the else uh, branch is going to be evaluated. We're going to capture here the error. If you don't want to do anything with the error, you can ignore it with the underscore. But here, what we're going to do is print out a message with that error specifically, okay? And uh, aside from the if, the while can also use an error union in its condition. So uh, what's going to happen here is that while this isn't an error, we're going to capture the value on success and the loop body will be executed. But if it is an error, then we uh, evaluate the else branch of the while and capture the error. And uh, we can do whatever we want here with uh, that error. OK, um, so it's basically just like the if, but in a looping uh, context. OK, and this is really flexible and powerful. Here we're making use uh, of, of uh, a similar function that we saw when we were talking about optionals. We have a global variable here, uh, countdown, we're setting it to three, find it over here outside of main. And here we have this function, which basically is uh, once again, just returning the result of this if expression. And in this case, we have an error union here. And uh, instead of having a specific error set, we are, we are using the special, the, the keyword, uh, any error, okay? And what this does is uh, it allows this function to basically return any type of error. Uh, another way you, you can see this in Zig is uh, when people uh, leave out uh, any name, 
you just see the exclamation point and the type that you want to return. It technically, what it's going to do, it's going to infer the errors that, that this uh, function can uh, return. Okay, so uh, this function, uh, if the countdown reaches zero, we will return an error in this case. Otherwise, we uh, decrement the, the countdown and we uh, return with that value of the countdown. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, let's uh, look at the output once more. Okay. So um, with that, that's basically uh, it for errors and error handling in Zig. It's really straightforward and uh, really simple to define your errors. And it's encouraged that you define uh, specific error types for different uh, situations and functions in your program. And in that way, you can get really uh, precise uh, handling and uh, reporting of errors. Okay. So I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.